rules of cooking in confined spaces. Today, we are broiling up a main dish, spicy chicken with charred eggplant puree served with warm pita. It's a Turkish delight, a rare art that will gratify your intelligence and take your palate to a mysterious world of wonder. Woo, here we go. So what we're gonna need is some chicken. You want some skinless, boneless chicken. Two garlic cloves, two large garlic cloves that we're gonna chop in a bit. If you want, I'm also a fan of the jarred, already pre-chopped garlic. It saves time. Do that if you must. It's gonna taste just as good. Um, also, we got some mint here. We're gonna use the mint to garnish the final um, product with. So then you're also gonna want some non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Yum, yum, yum. Another thing we're gonna want is some eggplant. I've already broiled this in the oven about 35 to 40 minutes. So you wanna cook your eggplant until it starts to, the skin starts to cave in, it starts to kinda of look like a dried raisin. So that's when you pretty much know it's ready and when the skin starts to peel off really easy like this. So what we're gonna do in just a second is we're gonna peel off all the skin, we're gonna take the insides out, we're gonna put it in a bowl and we're gonna mash it like mashed potatoes. So last but not least is you're gonna want some pita bread. So you'll see here too, I have everything combined in one designated area. It's because the kitchen is confined. And if you're like me, you don't have much room, you don't have much counter space to chop up all your things, all your ingredients, and put it all together. So I'm using it, you know, what I can in the space that I have. Okay, so yay, we're ready to start mashing up the eggplant. Remember, I already broiled it. So before you start mashing, make sure that you broil your eggplant until it turns into like a dried raisin, until you can easily peel peel off the skin. Make sure that you cool off your eggplant, you don't burn your hands while you're peeling off the skin um, before you get started. Alright, so what I'm going to do too, and you might want to, make sure that you get a bigger bowl so then you can put all the guts in and then we can easily mash it. So I'm going to just start peeling off the skin here. Okay, so there's one hot dog, baby. Look at that. Nice and juicy. You got lots of juice. I'm just going to cut off the stem, but I have to get, I have to get a knife here. All right, so I'm gonna cut this, the top part off. Got to make sure you use as much as you possibly can. Don't wanna waste any goodness there. Throw that into the sink. Ooh, and look at this one. This one is coming off very easily. So I'm just peeling off the skin. It's kinda of like a saggy boob. <laughs> Don't tell your grandma or mom that. All right, so we're just peeling that off, and I'm gonna go back and see if I can get any eggplant in there that I forgot or missed. Let me rinse off my hands real quick. Always gotta make sure that you're rinsing off your hands and cleaning dishes as you go. It's always a good time. All right, so the mash utensil is in here. Look at that. As organized as it can be. We'll talk about that in another show. We're gonna organize all the cabinets. I'm gonna show you the best way to organize your cabinets and get the most space out of your out of your kitchen. So what I'm doing is I'm mashing mashed potato time. Wow, look at how good that's mashing. And then as I mash this, I'm going to then add the garlic and the salt into the mix. So I'm just throwing away the remains, the skins of the eggplant, and now I'm gonna, there's a little bit of juice in here, which looks good, so I'm gonna throw that in there. Any kind of juices you have left over on anything, keep it, because it's good to like mix into the recipes, because that usually has all the, the flavor in it anyways. All right, so here we have our two big garlic cloves, and I'm just gonna chop those guys up. Whatever gets it kind of mushy and you start to smell the garlic and the evil spirits starting to roll away because you know they don't like garlic or onions. But I do. Alright, so that's good. That's all mashed up. Good enough for me. I'm going to put it into this bowl. I'm going to throw it into the eggplant mix. Okay. Then we're going to put some of the non-fat yogurt in non-fat Greek yogurt. We need about um, a cup and a half of this. So right now I have a cup. I'm gonna pour that in. Alright, all right, and now we're gonna mash it up. You ready? Mash all that yummy goodness up. Look at that. Oh yeah. 
That's going to be beautiful. All right, so I'm going to take my eggplant puree baby right here. It weighs probably about five pounds with the bowl. And I'm going to dump it into the saucepan, and then we're going to cook it under, like, probably about medium-low. All right, so I'm just going to, uh, so you can see, I'm pouring that in. It's heavy. Oh. All right, so I'm just going to wash up this bowl real quick before we get started on uh, sprinkling the red pepper on. Remember, clean as you go, clean as you go, and then you'll have more time to enjoy your meal afterwards, and um, you won't have to go right into the kitchen after you're done with, while you're, when you're eating, because you'll just be able to hang out and watch TV or spend time with your family. I always hate afterwards, on uh, Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner, you, after you're done eating, all the women tend to flock to the kitchen to wash the dishes, and then they prepare dessert, which is all great, but who wants to really get up and do dishes after dinner? I mean, you're full. You just want to enjoy, relax, and then have dessert just come out without having to clean up afterwards. You you know, so clean as you go and then you get to enjoy later. So let's get that red pepper into my conveniently spice rack here. So let's see, you got red pepper and then I'm going to also grab some black pepper. It needs a little oil on the little grease on that thing. Uh oh, I just, it's a little spill here. That's another thing, you get spillage a lot in a small confined kitchen. Make sure you watch out for those, because if that dries up, it turns into something not so nice later. All right, so let's just go sprinkle the red pepper onto um, onto the eggplant puree right here, and also we'll um, we'll put the oven on to about medium high. So there's a little red pepper. Yeah, hope that's not paprika. It wasn't. Make sure you don't get paprika on there, which I'm sure that'd be good too. Woo, so here's some slab of meats for you. We just cut up some chicken, skinless, boneless chicken, and now we are going to put them into a nonstick skillet and then sprinkle it with some red pepper and some black pepper and some salt. All right, let's go. Now I already heated this up to about medium high. We got some oil already in there, cooking and ready to go. So, voila, mushy mushy. So I'm gonna just sprinkle a little red pepper on this, guys. Woo, all right, good enough for me. A little bit of salt. Okay, that's good. And then some black pepper. You can already start to listen to it scream. All right, so that's good. Now I'm just gonna move these guys around a little bit. Make sure we cook them on all sides. All right, so the chicken's almost cooked. It's almost finished. I'm gonna turn it down just a little. Now the recipe doesn't call for this, but I like to add as much flavor as I can to the mix of things. So I'm adding a little bit of all-purpose Greek seasoning to the chicken. So just a little bit there. That ah, looks pretty. And you know what? You might want to, for those who live in confined kitchens like myself and get splattered with grease and oil and anything else that you're cooking that likes to splatter it back at you, like tomato sauce or something, these are actually really good. It's like a screen to keep in all the nasties that pop back out at you when you're cooking. So I'll just keep that on there so no oil starts to splatter all over the place. Plus, it saves time on cleaning. So as the chicken's cooking and the eggplant puree is simmering, I'm gonna put together real quick the pita bread. I'm just gonna grab two of the flat, the flat uh, bread ones that I grabbed, roll them up, put them in the toaster oven, and just let them bake for a good, maybe, maybe five minutes. I'm gonna take a little bit of mint that I have here, and I'm just going to chop up a little bit, because I'm gonna use that as a garnish on top of the eggplant puree and the chicken. So now we are almost done in just about one minute. We're gonna go over and take the puree out first and then we're going to top it with uh, the spiced, spicy chicken. All right, we'll be right back, let's do it. All righty, so we finally have the final product of the charred eggplant puree. Mmm, does it smell so good. You can smell the garlic and the eggplant and the yogurt all together as one, And but it's heated and it's just, oh, it's just, it's just so delicious. All right, so I'm gonna pour that into this serving dish here, make it look pretty, and then what I'm gonna do is top that with 
some chicken and then we're gonna garnish it with some mint and maybe some parsley because I chopped up some parsley too. So hold on one second. I'm gonna get that, let me put this pan back over here on the stove top. And now I'm going to grab the chicken, but first let me get like a little spatula here. All right, so now, whew, it's a little heavy. Just so let me put it up here because it's heavy. It's really great to have a toaster oven in your confined kitchen. All right, so I'm gonna take the chicken and I'm going to lay it on top of this eggplant here. Ooh, okay, so we have already garnished it with some mint and parsley, yum, and now we're ready to take a bite. You know what, if you're daring like me, I would maybe sprinkle a little bit of feta cheese and maybe just a little drizzle of lemon juice because you and I both know I love lemon. All right, so let's go, let's dig in just a little bit here. Just a bite, because it's not quite dinner time yet. All right? Oh, yum. All right, so because I have a small mouth, I'm gonna have to cut my chicken just a little bit. I'm sure you can all fit that into your mouth, no problem. All right, so then I'm going to just tear off a little pita, little pita bread right here, it's a little toasted. Okay, and I'm gonna scoop it up onto the pita. Oh my God, yum, holy moly's. All right, that's fine, I'll go back for that one later. And then I'm going to just kind of roll it up. All right, here we go. Are you ready for the final test? Let's see if it tastes good. All right. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Mmm. 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 Between this and the zucchini fritters with feta cheese that we cooked up on last episode, oh my God, you're gonna be in heaven. Next episode, we are going to top off this Turkish delight with cognac glazed dried apricots and cinnamon spiced yogurt. It is going to be to die for. So make sure you tune in next time on Cooking in Confined Spaces. I'm going to finish this up here and I'm going to finish the dishes for you. Lucky you. See you next time. Bye-bye.